Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, a video game with over 70 fighters available from launch. From Mario to Fire Emblem, from Pokemon to Fire Emblem, from Zelda to... Fire Emblem. There are a ton of fighters in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, spanning Nintendo's gaming history and, as of late, characters from other franchises such as Sonic the Hedgehog, Hi, I Like Explosives, I Miss Smash 4, and numerous others. However, to make more money, I mean, to get you guys even more hype for the game, we have included a Fire's Pass with five characters. You guys had absolutely no clue who these characters are, can't refund this Fire's Pass, and we're not required to give you the first thing that's freaking trending on Twitter for a new Smash character. So please, don't send Mr. Sakurai death threats and at least respect the fact that he has fun with who he puts in the game. The first character that we've included in the Fire's Pass is Arsene. Joker. Who's Joker? Oh, the guy that Arsene flies right behind. I thought it was just a side character. Most quick play Jokers just play for Arsene anyway. Joker is from the Persona franchise, an absolutely amazing franchise for the PlayStation consoles. He's one of the fastest characters in the game, being utilized by characters like MK Leo to win tournaments. For his neutral special, he wields a gun. If you want to gim people, the gun is a very useful tool to use. Also, if you're in stamina battles at low percents, the gun will look a little bit more realistic, if you know what I mean. But half the time, Joker is just going to be using Rebel's Guard, just to get our sin and have better kill moves. Also, we decided to give him an invincible recovery, so uh, have fun with that! Next up, we got a hero. I don't know what big man with the four pro controllers was on when he was creating this character for Smash, but all we know is that he had a DANG fun time using it. Hero's normal moves are laggy, but can cover like 17 different approach options. Now, what makes Hero shine is stuff like... That. Just imagine a 7 year old child, about to lose a game with a Ganondorf, be like, Daddy, you won! Look how good I am, Daddy! Dad! That up B can lead to one of the more disrespectful moves in this game, and Smash attacks... do that. Let's go back to the 7 year old example. I can imagine thinking they did some secret combination when they crit the opponent, and think they're ready to win EVO after they get a crit on someone online. Speaking of EVO, somebody's gotta pick this character up during EVO and just thwack away 3 stocks. Can you imagine how crazy the crowd would be? Maybe not in a good way, but it would be hilarious. Our third fighter is someone who feels like they've been in the game since 64. There wasn't too much absolutely absurd stuff about Banjo, but he just feels good to play in the game. You got the neutral, which makes you mildly concerned and question where the eggs are coming from. You also got the Wonder Wing, which is basically the casual dream that they can only live at most 15 times per game before they actually have to start thinking about mix-ups. You got the up B, the down B spam, where they wait for you to fall into them, and the down air, which- OH NO! The fourth fighter we've got for you today is something that Let's face it, only half of you are going to unlock their true potential. The rest of you are going to be doing the wrong side being into the blast zone. Yes sir, it's... Blonde haired Pokemon Train. Terry Bogard has a decent moveset with a projectile, an up B, which is... Uh... And also some amazing combo starters. For example... But that's all I got. That's all most people are going to do anyway. And for the people who like horror circles and pretzel motions, we got special combinations for you guys. Can we be honest, the person who mapped these inputs just spun the control stick a couple of times, and we just went with one of them for the Power Geyser and Buster Wolf. I mean, it's all that some of you guys do instead of carefully articulating which direction you want. And last but not least, we heard you guys on Twitter and all other forms of social media about who we should include as the fifth DLC character. You said that we should include Minecraft Steve, Shovel Knight, Sora, and most importantly, not a character which was part of a franchise with seven representatives already. And guess what? We didn't give a flying crap about your suggestions. Take this character, boys and girls, we got our money from the Fighters Pass. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not supposed to say that? Oh, okay. But Mr. Sakurai was incredibly proud of this character, and as usual, does his adorable little geek out over having a character in the game. You don't have to love Byleth, but you can at least respect the people that do. Say your two cents, and then hold your silence. Byleth has a bow, which can break your shield, what the f- Also, this individual can reach from LA to New York with some of those aerials and smash attacks. He has many different forms of attack from a long-reaching lance, to a long-reaching axe which can hit you like a Pepsi semi-truck. An up B which will probably grow to be as disrespectful as Mario's forward aerial, which can also grab the lower parts of ledges, HOW?! And in many ways, there's a change of pace for the typical Fire Emblem formula. That formula being Japanese guy has a sword, Japanese guy swings a sword, Japanese guy wins the match. And these are the five characters of the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass. You guys have six more fires to look forward to as well. Be prepared. For all Fire Emblem characters!